morning, YouTube, friends and family. All right, weekend is over. I hope you enjoyed that Toddy Pond series as much as we did. Now we get to work. Gonna take Milo to the bus. I think I've explained that, you know, his bus stop is um, a couple miles down the road, so we typically give him a ride down, you know. Milo is 15 now. He's gonna start driver's ed soon. And then before you know it, he will have his own license. But probably won't have his own car. Anyway, thanks for coming with me on my day, and we'll see you in a few. and the well wishes. I appreciate it. I also wanted to get in touch with you about your installation issues. All right. It's the security of knowing that you've got heat. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I just got my final rejection note <clears throat> from uh, this one from the Portland Press Herald to do a story about our whole Colorado Trail adventure. We felt that as we got into it, it was quite an inspirational story given the feedback we were getting from people on and off the trail. I pitched a story idea to the Durango Herald, the Denver Post, both in Colorado, and in Maine to the Portland Press Herald and to the Kennebec Journal, which are our two local newspapers. And um, every one of them said, uh, either didn't respond or said that they had too many stories and to make a long story short, just weren't interested, which was, I thought, kind of a disappointment. You know, I thought our story was a really a great one and it still is and I believe it is still, but uh, you know, the adventure seekers and those that are treating the outdoors as a, a sports playground seem to be grabbing all the attention right now. So it's not so much about the growth and the uh, lessons that can be learned from nature as much as it is, you know, how fast, how far, how high can you get, go, and, and, and be when, when doing these adventures. I'm still trying to crack the nut, not a big deal. But, uh, geez, just a little bit of a disappointment, you know? Come on, folks. This is a kind of a cool inspiration for other families to be doing this stuff. spring we planted some mushroom logs Andre and I prepared some logs drilled a bunch of holes and inoculated it with mushroom spores and then sealed it over with wax instructions were to make sure it was watered I'm sure it didn't get watered because I didn't tell my brother about it and it's out sort of on the edge of the woods here that zero growth. Of course it probably got zero water so uh, my expectations should probably be about zero. You know 
that's okay because I'm not a real big fan of mushrooms. But Andre will be disappointed for sure. And and who knows? Maybe with some rain they'll they'll kick in. Though I didn't plant a garden this year. Every year, um, tomatillos volunteer. I plant some, but they also come up because they're so prolific. They drop so many fruits. There's just so many seeds already in the soil. So. As a result, even though I didn't plant these tomatillos, I have a pretty decent harvest here. So I'm just gonna, you know, pick the ones that are good and make some tomatillo salsa. Tomatillos will continue to grow until the first or second frost even. So some of these that aren't quite filling their papery sacks will get a little bit bigger, especially if I water them. Now these little jobbies, even though they look like tomatillos, are in fact not tomatillos. They're something called husk cherries and they also have this little papery sack and inside oops is this little sweet delectable juicy cherry like fruit mm, wicked good these husk cherries are also volunteers that keep coming back year after year i don't even remember planting them and gardening is just sort of a relationship with nature that's totally different because you're collecting a seed you're reproducing a life you're basically enabling another species to get by so that you can collect a small benefit from it I really look forward to apple season every year because there's so much you can do with such a plentiful fruit that really requires very little labor as far as I need to put in you know, it's these small things in life that keep keep me going. Um, it's things for me to look forward to, like picking blackberries, like making applesauce, like making maple syrup, where they're not a giant production in my life, but there's something that I get to grab onto and make it feel like it's, it's part of my life and, and have a somewhat of a, a seasonal routine. So apples are definitely part of that. I gotta say, you know, being home and back in sort of civilization does feel confining when compared to being out in the wilderness. I mean, of course it's natural, right? Because you're in a building a lot, but there's just lots of layers of life that we seem to have to navigate that are really not part of what it means or what we need to have for conditions to be a human, you know? I mean, human beings are social creatures that, you know, otherwise just need sort of the creature comforts, you know, the food, clothing, and shelter. I'm just being a pawn for somebody else's marketing scheme sometimes. There's something frustrating about being pent up in society instead of, you know, closer to the freedom you get when you're, you're in the wilderness. You know, life is simple.
clear to me. I need a change that is emblematic of the change that we underwent when we did the Colorado trip. That kind of a scale, like totally switch gears, totally shake things up. You know, as I try to reintegrate myself into society, you know, and not to make a too big, big of deal out of spending six weeks in the woods, but uh, you know, you just learn that, oh boy, we spend an awful lot of time doing things we don't want to do. Some of that we call survival, you know, food, clothing, shelter. Some of it is just serving the ends of others. It makes me feel like that elf in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You remember that 1964 movie and Herbie the Elf is not making toys like the other elves. He's failing at making toys. And his supervisor asks him, what is it that you want to do, Herbie? And Herbie says, I I'd like to be a, a dentist. A dentist! You know, I feel that way right now, you know? I want to be a movie maker. I want to be a video producer. But my world right now is so far from that. So, anyway, one of the things that I've been thinking about is maybe trying to marry what I want to do with what I am doing. One of my viewers, um, Marsha, came up with a great idea. You know who you are, Marsha. That I do a multi-part series um, on energy efficiency in the home. So what you can do to make your home more energy efficient. I thought that was a great idea. Thanks, Marsha. I think I'm going to start working on that. I'm glad you came with me on my day. It makes it more fun knowing that there's people, you know, right there, experiencing all the same stuff and maybe feeling the, the uh, pros and cons of every decision and, you know, getting a little bit closer to understanding what life is like in Maine, what life is like for a contractor, what life is like for a dad. Um, or identifying with any of those things if you already are those things. Anyway, thanks for, thanks for watching. Thanks for being there. And we'll see you tomorrow. I think I should bring back my follower map. And maybe do another question and answer soon, too. See ya.